Hello and welcome to another Read With Me session. I'm yours truly, Isabel Bedell, and I'm here with you reading The Compound Effect. So, so happy to be here with you. We are going to be tackling chapter number five, where we're going to be talking about influences, y'all. Influences. In the past couple of videos, we talked about, let's say, uh, chapter number four, the last one that we just covered split into two parts it was all about momentum how to get it how to maintain it how to grow it when you once you have it and most importantly how to befriend big mo into your life and how to maintain that connection with big mo and if you have not experienced big mo in your life get ready because that chapter will tell you what it is how to get it how to maximize it and I'm so excited for you to learn about it because Big Mo has been such an, an abundant blessing in my life that I hope you use the law of Big Mo to your advantage. It's a really, really powerful way to just grow, okay? And speaking of growing, we're going to be talking about influences here. Chapter number five. Chapter number five is going to be really, really powerful and we're going to be most likely splitting this up into two. So let's get into it, shall we? Awesome. Chapter number five. Okay. Hopefully by now you understand exactly how important your choices are. Even those that seem insignificant, when compounded, you make an extreme impact on your life. We've also discussed that the fact that you are 100% responsible for your life. You are you alone are responsible for the choices you make and the actions that you take. That said, you must also realize your choices, behaviors, and habits are influenced by very powerful external forces. Most of us aren't aware of the subtle control these forces have on our lives. And for you to sustain a positive trajectory towards your goals, you'll need to understand and govern these influences. This is to ensure that they support rather than derail your journey towards success. Everyone is affected by three kinds of influences. Input, what you feed your mind. Associations, the people you spend time with. And environment, your surroundings. Okay. We are all affected by three kinds of influences. Input, associations, and environment. Number one, environment. Garbage in, garbage out. Okay. If you want your body to run at peak performance, you have to be vigilant about consuming the highest quality nutrients and avoiding tempting junk food. If you want your brain to perform at its peak, you have to be even more vigilant about what you feed it. Are you feeding it constantly with negative news or mind-numbing TV shows? Are you stuffing your head full of BuzzFeed gossip, insane social media, or TikTok videos? The input you ingest has a direct and measurable impact on your productivity and outcomes. Keeping control over what our brain consumes is especially difficult because so much of what we actually take in is unconscious. Although it's true that we can eat without thinking, it's easier to pay attention to what we put into our bodies because food doesn't leap into our mouths. We need an extra layer of vigilance to prevent our brains from absorbing irrelevant, counterproductive, and downright destructive input. It's a never-ending battle to be selective and to stand guard against any information that can derail your creative potential. It's important to understand that your brain is not designed to make you happy. Your brain has only one agenda in mind, survival. It is always watching for signs of lack and attack. Your brain is programmed to seek out the negative, dwindling dwiddle, resources, destructive weather, potential threats, and whatever is out to hurt you. So whenever you open up those news alerts on your phone in the morning and get bombarded with all those reports about robberies, fires, attacks, and tanking economy, your brain lights up. Your brain will now spend all day 
chewing over that feast of fear, worry, and negativity. Same deal when you scroll through updates in the evening. More bad news? Perfect! Your mind will stew on that all night long. Left to its own devices, your mind will traffic in the negative, worrisome, and fearful all day and night. We can't change our DNA, but we can change our behavior. Oof. Yeah. We can teach our minds to look beyond lack and attack. How? We can protect and feed our minds. We can discipline and Per, we can be disciplined and proactive about what we allow in. I know it's difficult to find consistent, positive, and abundant sources to put into your mind in the start of each day. That is why Darren here, the author of this book, has created a five-minute mentoring video every weekday, especially designed to kickstart your morning and help you become better every day. Here we go. Don't drink dirty water. You get in life what you create. Expectations drive the creative process. What do you expect? You expect whatever it is that you're thinking about. Your thought process, the conversation in your head is at the base of the results you create in life. So the question is, what are you thinking about? What is influencing and directing your thoughts? The answer, whatever you're allowing yourself to hear and see. This is the input you are feeding your brain, period. Your mind is like an empty glass. It will hold anything you put into it. You put in sensational news, salacious headlines, talk show rants, and you're pouring dirty water into your glass. If you've got dark, dismal, worrisome water in your glass, everything you create will be filtered through that muddy mess. And because that's what you'll be thinking about, Garbage in, garbage out. All that drive, time, radio yak about murders, conspiracy, deaths, economy, and political battle drives your thinking process. What drives your expectations? Which drives your creative output? This is bad news. But just like a dirty glass, if you flush it with clean, clear water under the faucet, long enough, eventually, you'll end up with a glass of pure, clear water. What is that clear water? Well, positive, inspirational, supportive input and ideas, stories of aspiration, people who, despite challenges, are overcoming obstacles and achieving great things, strategies of success, prosperity, health, love, and joy, ideas to create abundance, to grow, expand, and become more. This is why I work so hard to deliver the Darren Daily each workday. I want to provide you with those examples and stories and the key takeaways you can, you can use to improve your view of the world, yourself, and the results you create. That's why I read something inspirational and instructional for 30 minutes in the morning and in the evening and have personal development podcasts playing in my car while I work out, walk the dog, and do chores. I'm flushing my glass and feeding my mind. Does this give me an edge over the guy who gets up and reads newspapers first thing or listens to the radio? on his commute to and from work and watches all or scrolls through the evening news before going to bed, you bet it does. And it can for you. Number one, step in, step and stand guard. Here's a step one, stand guard. <clears throat> Unless you decide to hole up in a cave or on a desert island, you're going to get dirty glass, dirty water in your glass. It's going to be on billboards, CNN, while you're walking through the airport, even screaming tabloid headlines at the checkout when you're buying groceries. Even your friends, family members, and your own negative mental tapes can flood dirty water into your glass. But that doesn't mean that you can't take steps to limit your exposure to all that grime. Maybe you can't avoid the negative post when you go on social media, but you can limit the amount of time you're logged on. You can refuse to listen to the radio 
to and from work and instead put on an instructional inspirational audiobook or podcast. You can put down your phone and talk to your loved ones instead. You can press play on those show recommendations you feel are truly educational and life affirming and speed through the commercials aimed at making you feel inadequate or lacking unless you buy more crap. I didn't really grow up with TV. I remember watching Solid Gold and the A-Team. But the television wasn't a big part of our family life. I managed somehow to thrive without it. And that's given me a clear perspective when I watch an occasional program now. Sure, I'll laugh along with the sitcom, but afterward I feel the same as if I ate fast food, bloated and malnourished. And I can't get over how many commercials prey on our psychology, our fears, pains, needs, and weaknesses. If I walk through life thinking that I'm not good enough, just as I am, that I need to buy this or that or the other thing to be okay, how can I expect to create amazing results? It's estimated that Americans 12 and older spend over 1,700 hours watching TV per year. That averages out to 4.7 hours per day, and we're spending almost 30% of our waking hours watching TV almost 33 hours per week, more than one whole day each week. It's the equivalent of watching TV for two solid months out of no, out of every 12. Wow. And people wonder why they can't get ahead in life. Hmm. Put yourself on a media diet. The media thrives on taking us hostage. Ever stuck, ever been stuck on a highway with traffic backed up for miles, making you late, wondering what the heck is holding everything up. Sure enough, when you finally get close, you see that nothing physical is blocking the flow of cars. The wreck clearly happened a while ago and has since moved to the side of the freeway. The three miles per hour crawl was caused by people rubbernecking. Now you're really irritated, but that's what happens when your car passes the wreck. You slow down, take your eyes off the road in front of you, and then you crane your own neck. Why? Why do good? Decent people want to see something tragic and grotesque. It's our generic heritage, going back to our prehistoric sense of self-preservation. We can't help ourselves. Even if we're adept at avoiding negativity and have trained ourselves to be relentlessly positive, when it comes to sensationalism, our basic nature can't resist. Media masters understand that. They know your nature and in many ways better than you. The media has always used shocking and sensational headlines to draw attention, but today, instead of three news, three news, TV, and radio networks, there are hundreds running 24 seven. And instead of newspapers, there are endless portals reaching us from our computers to our phones. The competition of your attention for your attention has never been bloodier and the media jockeys continuously up the ante in shock value. They find a dozen or so of the most heinous, scandalous, criminal murderous leaks and horrid things that happen in the world each day and parade them through our papers, news channels and the web over and over. Plus nowadays, anyone with a social media handle can choose to share, spread and pass on negative stories with a quick click of a button. Meanwhile, during the same 24 hour period, millions of wonderful people and credit, millions of wonderful, beautiful, incredible things have been happening, yet we only hear very little about them. Being wired to seek out the negative, we create the demand for more and more. How could the positive news stories ever hope to compete with those ratings, shares, and advertising dollars? Let's go all the way back to the freeway and instead of a wreck on, on the side of the road, what if there was a, the most stunning, miraculous sunset you've ever seen? What would happen to the traffic then? I've, been, I've seen this so many times. It whizzes by at the top speed. The great danger of the media is that it gives us a very perverted view of the world. And because the focus of the repetition of messaging is on the negative, that's what our minds start believing. This warped and narrow view of what's now working has a severe influence of your creative potential. It is crippling. Wow. He put that so eloquently, you know? I know all of us here 
are literally using social media to, you know, generate business or, you know, we're just so accustomed to opening it up. But he says it so eloquently in the sense of like, yeah, that is that is all the crap that people are praying, you know, praying um not to receive, but there's people out there that are just pushing negative content out there because that's actually what's a lot more people are attracted to, you know? And it's anyways, I'm not gonna get into that because that is a whole different topic and I'm not really into all of that anyways here's what it is he now he's going to talk about his personal junk filter i'll share what i do to safeguard my mind but i warn you i have a rigorous mental diet you'll want to adjust to your own preferences but the system has worked beautifully for me as you might guess i don't watch or listen to any news and i don't read any news or feed news feeds or news publications 99% of all the news has no bearing on my personal life and personal goals, dreams, ambitions. Anyway, I have set up a few RSS feeds identifying the news and industry updates that do pertain to my direct interest and goals. The news that's helpful to me gets plucked out of the fray so I don't have to get any mud slung into my glass of water. While most people wade through hours of irrelevant garbage and hampers through their thinking and crushes their spirit, I get the most productive information that I need when I need it and in less than 15 minutes a day. Here's step number two, enroll in drive time you. It's not enough to eliminate negative input. To move in a positive direction, you must flush out the bad and fill up the good. My car won't move without two things, gasoline, and an ever-present library of instructional podcasts and audiobooks I listen to as I drive. The average American drives about 12,000 miles a year. That's 300 hours of flushing potential right there. Brian Tracy taught me the concept of turning my car into a mobile classroom. He explained to me that by listening to instructional materials as I drive, I gain knowledge equivalent to two semesters of an advanced college degree every year. Think about it. Using the time that you're currently wasting by listening to Drive Time Radio, you can obtain the equivalent of a PhD in leadership, sales success, wealth building, relationship excellence, or whatever course you choose. This commitment in combination with your reading routine separates you from the herd of average. One podcast or book at a time. By the way, if you want a podcast that will give you positive input in what you're looking for, check out the Darren Daily On Demand, wherever you listen to podcast episodes. Here we go. Associations. Now, this is going to be really, really, really powerful because it's going to be a complete game changer. I'm going to leave that one for the next part of this chapter because I want to make sure that we cover associations alongside uh, the last part of this which is environment so let's get into the next video where we talk about associations and who's influencing you I'll see you in the next video see ya